Tig here. Welcome to live stream number, I don't know what number this is now, but it's been a few and I'm getting better at them. Um, so hey, this live stream we're going to talk about um, a few fun things. The, the, the best part is I have a page to go with this lesson this time, which I've said I was going to do in the past, but I never made the time, or I never got the time quite right to get it right. So anyway, in the description below, you'll find uh, the links to the material. Um, so that first, the first link, click that, it's going to open up the material, and then, um, yeah, we're going to jump right in. Basically, we're going to talk about uh, scales on one string and the importance of them, and there's a few reasons. Uh, we're going to do a little pull-off exercise, which is kind of cool and kind of fun, and which is going to work on building um, some hand strength. Uh, David, how are you? So glad I didn't take a nap now. I've really found these helpful. Awesome, David. Uh, this one's a good one. We've got some good stuff planned, so uh, grab your guitar. And I, I just said that I have a link in the description this time with the material to go with this lesson, which is what I've intended all along. And I, I think we're going to see that most moving forward, I'll probably have the material up more often than not. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, so um, we're basically... We're going to jump right in, and we're just going to talk about building um, a major scale on, on one string and the importance of it and the reason why we might want to build a scale on a string. So I'm just going to use my low open E here for a moment. There's a nut so you can see the fret. Notice I do not have a third fret dot. So, um, But major scales are all built with a, a formula, and it's the same formula. So the very first thing we want to know is the difference between a whole step and a half step. So a whole step is a fret, skip a fret to a fret. This is the sound of a whole step. Half step's a fret to the very next fret. So there's one formula that builds all major scales. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So if I go whole step, takes me to my second fret, whole step again to my fourth fret, half step to my fifth, whole step to my seventh, whole step to my ninth, one more whole step takes me to my 11th, half step to my 12th. And I have an E major scale. Sounds like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. You may recognize that sound. So, and what we learned from there, and I'm not going to get too into it right now, but that was an E major scale, and it ended up with four sharps. Uh, if I start on any note and follow that same formula, so if I say start on an F on the first fret, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, full step, step, half step. I end up with an F major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. And you'll notice it sounds kind of similar. Here's a way you can test whether you built a major scale right. Backwards, a major scale sounds like joy to the world. I'm going to play it on E again. Right? Joy to the world. If I start on F, remember we built an F major scale. It also sounds like Joe World, one half step higher, which is why we can play any song in 12 keys. There's 12 notes in music, seven alphabet letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then the five sharps or flats. They're like the black keys on the piano. You notice on a piano there's a group of two and a group of three black keys that just repeat over and over again, and there's seven white keys. So that's our five sharps or flats and our seven alphabet letters. And that's our 12 tones used in, in music, everything that we pretty much listen to. So the importance of a major scale is kind of the basis of what we call tonal music, which is um, music that is fairly satisfying to our ears versus atonal music, which tends to be a little not as satisfying to our ears. But we'll talk about that later, too. Anyway, so that's how we would build a, a major scale. Uh, now, if you're thinking, well, it doesn't, how much sense does it make to play a major scale on one string? It's not very efficient, because I can play an E major scale like this. <laughs> Oops. That might make a lot more sense for um, as far as getting around the fretboard. But the beauty of playing a major scale on one string is what how you see the whole step and half steps, and probably more importantly, how you hear them. So you start your ears, even if you're not consciously aware of it, your ears are starting to make note of the difference between when we hear half steps versus when we hear whole steps. And this is important because there's only 12 notes of music, so our ears can start to kind of hear uh, music at different levels as we start to understand some of this stuff. Even if we're not going as far as, as figuring out what all the notes are, even if we're just talking about it just from 
you know, I just know it's my second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. Like I just know it as the numbers, but my ears are still going to make connections to those sounds. Uh, and teaching people in person for many, many years, I see it all the time. I see students of all ages um, being able to play stuff and repeat stuff. And they're not exactly sure how they do it because they don't really understand the material. But there's something happening in the brain that's keeping track of these sounds. It's much like how I believe we learn language as children. You know, nobody really teaches us how to speak. We learn it from hearing. And the brain starts absorbing and assimilating that information and turning it into something that we then speak. And we then learn one word, couple words, phrases. Uh, and I think that happens musically too. I mean, if you think about it, why would it be any different? The only thing, sometimes as we get older, I think the, the brain can start kind of messing with us a little bit and thinking that we can't do it. But if we trust that the brain is capable of so much more than we give it credit for, um, yeah, so anyway, long-winded, but that, and the importance of learning scales on one string. So that's an E major scale on one string. Where we're heading for is a blues scale, because the riff that's on that page that I showed you, and we'll talk about it in a minute, and I'll take just a pause while you can, there's an MP3 on there, you can hear what we're going to do. I know it sounds crazy if you've already listened to it, and you might be like, I can't play that, but I, you can, watch. Uh, so anyway, so that was a major scale. A minor scale, we can say it, we take the major scale and we lower the third, the sixth, and the seventh note of the scale. So you know we went E major, we went E, F sharp, G sharp, so the second fret to the fourth fret. Well, that fourth fret was our third note, right? One, two, three. It gave us an F sharp. So we're going to lower it a half step. Sorry, it gave us a G sharp, not an F sharp. It, we're going to lower it a half step to make it a G. So the start of our E minor scale is open second, third, E, F sharp, G. And notice that it's a very different sound than the major scale that sounded like this in the beginning. Right? The first three notes. The fourth note for both scales is the same, and so is the fifth. It's an A and a B. So here's my E major. Here's my E minor. So, so far, there's only one note difference in those first five notes, but how we hear it is quite different, right? The major, that just that third note being raised to that G sharp has such an uplifting sound versus E minor which has a much darker sound, right? Okay, let's keep going. So then we said the sixth degree would have to be uh, lowered. So the sixth degree, the fifth was our B. The sixth took us to the ninth fret for a C sharp. So now it becomes a C. So let's just observe now the E major for a moment. There's that C sharp. Now here's E minor. There's that eighth fret for a C. Again, right, a different sound. And then the seventh, note of the scale was a D sharp on the 11th fret, but now we're lowering it to a D. So here's our full E major scale. Here's our E minor scale. Right? Very different sound. Now, the material that I have up is the part we're about to go to now. The material we just covered is actually all on the site too, but it's part of the uh, member section, so you have to Join, but there's a free limited access membership, and I, I believe that that material is in that section. If not, because you're in the live stream, if you let me know and you can't find it, I'll, I'll hook you up to make sure you can find that material. Uh, okay, and then a, a pentatonic scale is basically a, a scale um, missing uh, two notes. It's missing the fourth and seventh degree of, of the major scale. So in the case of E major, <laughs> To make it pentatonic, I have to get rid of the fourth note, which was an A, and then get rid of the seventh note, which was a D sharp. So I have this. Sounds like my girl. Anyway, those are, again, not the most efficient way to play a scale on one string, but what we're talking about here is the sound, how we hear it and how we see it visually. Uh, the guitar is a rather complicated instrument as far as how the notes are laid out versus say a piano where they're all in order, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G over and over again. So when we're learning piano, there's just some very obvious connections made in the brain and how sounds, the letters and the sounds work. 
Uh, the guitar is not so much like that. It's uh, uh, David just says this would be helpful when learning slide too. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, David. So you know, you know, kind of, you know where you're trying to slide to. You know what note you're trying to hit and make it sound like. And and also remember, all the stuff we're doing is training our ear. Anytime we're picking up our guitar, we're training our ear. When we can think specifically about certain scales and and certain whole steps and half steps, we're training our ear even more because um, we're working on something smaller, right? And we're being aware. Okay, so that was our, our pentatonic. So now, uh, now we want to build an E minor pentatonic. Now, this is where stuff gets a little bit funny because E minor is relative to the key of G major, which means they are both of the same key. A G major has one sharp and E minor has one sharp. The difference is if I play from G to G, I have a G major scale. Like at the beginning of this lesson, we went whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That would be a G major scale starting on that G. If I get rid of the fourth and the seventh, which is that C and the F sharp, I have a G major pentatonic scale. And that is the same as an E minor pentatonic scale. Now I realize at that point this starts to get, if this is all fairly new to you, that starts to get fairly like, oh my goodness, this is hard on the head. So what I wanna do, I don't wanna go too much further into that because I don't want things to get too hard ahead. So I wanna just show you what the scale is and then I wanna jump into the exercise that we have the material for. But again, um, the, the way to, uh, I, I've spent a lot of time creating musiclearning.com and, and specifically the member section and, and finding a way through many years of teaching uh, to make it make sense how we learn the fretboard and how we learn music theory and how we train our ear all at the same time. So that's why I said I don't want to go into that relative major or minor just now because we already covered a lot enough today. I would say if you're taking anything from this lesson today, other than the riff we're about to do, which is the real fun, but is that a major scale is built whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If you start on any note at all and you follow that formula, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, you just built that major scale, whatever note you started on. So in that case, I just built an F sharp major scale with six sharps. We don't want to talk about that. So back to the key of E. So here's what our E minor pentatonic scale looks like. We're going to go E, open E, six fret. Then we're going to go to the third fret. I said six fret, six string, sorry. Then we're going to go to the third fret for G, fifth fret for A, seventh fret for B, tenth fret for D, and then we're back to E on the twelfth fret. That's it. So open E, and now this material is on the page, but it's on this high E string. However, if you go to that page, if you guys are on that page now, so again, the link is in the description for the material to go with the stuff we're about to do. It's a blues scale, but a blues scale is a minor pentatonic scale with one extra note, with, with, which is gonna be a B flat on the sixth string. So I'm gonna to move to the high E string now since it'll go with the material we have. So E, open E, third fret, G, seventh fret A, sorry, fifth fret A, I think I'm half asleep. Seventh fret for a B, 10th fret for a D, 12th fret for an E. Okay, so this is an E minor pentatonic string. E minor pentatonic scale on one string, on the E string. Can't seem to speak today. And to make it a blues scale, a blues scale is just a minor pentatonic scale with a flat five. The five, so the fifth note of that E scale was a B. So, so some people might say, well, wait a sec, because we, we took some notes out of the scale to make it pentatonic, right? A pentatonic scale is a five note scale. So then you may be, if you, might, if you counted one, two, three, four, you're like, wait, B is the fourth note of the scale, which you're correct, it is the fourth note of the scale, but the interval, the distance between this E and the B, E, F, G, A, B, is a fifth. So we we're still gonna call that a fifth, even though it's the fourth note of the scale. Again, slightly confusing, but it would all make sense if we're doing this you know, in a, in a building block systematic approach to learning the instrument. This is one of the troubles with the live stream, as fun as they are, but when we get into some of this real material, it's, it's hard to make it apply to everybody if people are, are not, on, you know, haven't done as much as other people. Anyway, so let's have fun learning the riff. So we had our blues scale. And the last thing I'll say about that is uh, just, again, learning the scales on one string. It's to train our ears. 
and it's to learn the fretboard. Not the most efficient way. I could play the E blues scale like this. That's a lot more efficient than, which has all these giants shifting all over. But this is easier for me to see, easier for me to learn the fretboard, easier to train my ear. So, so that's why I create these exercises for this. And I have two, I did one on, on finger picking, and there's a link in the description for that too, if you have interest in finger picking, which also talks about the major scale and the minor scale. Oh, actually, so that material that we were talking about a minute ago, you don't even have to register for that. That's in the total free section. So that link I sent you to in the description will take you to that information, which will show you, or maybe it only shows you an E major in that one. Now I don't remember, I have to look it up. Anyway, some of it is there. Okay, so here we go. So to practice scales on one string, they get a little bit boring just to go up and down. So I create little exercises to make them more fun. This little exercise is based on something very, very simple. We're gonna take the third fret of our E string. We're gonna down pick it. Then we're gonna pull that string off. So now when you pull the, pull the note off, actually yank it down off the string. Pick, and then yank it off the string. So if I just kind of take it off the string, I don't really hear anything. So I kind of gotta pull it down. So you experiment with that a little time. It's called a pull off. So we could just practice the pull off, pick, pull off, pick, pull off. I did a lesson on um, Thunderstruck. We actually talked about it in the last last live stream because we were talking about hand strength. That's a that's a tough one to to play for an extended period of time. Um, but in Thunderstruck, which there's lesson material for it, but it's in the member section of musicearn.com. It's, it's in the paid section, because obviously I can't give everything away for free or I wouldn't have any chance of earning a living from this. Um, but uh, but the video is free and it's on YouTube, so you'll see on my channel, if you just type in Thunderstruck, you'll find it. Uh, but that one, that one basically just has you pick a note, pull off, and it repeats. This pattern's a little tiny bit different. We're gonna pick the G, pull off to the open E, then we're going to go down up for four sixteenth notes. One E and a. You can count it as four eighth notes too. One and two and. You can count it as quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Doesn't really matter because remember quarter notes at 200 beats per minute would be the same as eighth notes at 100 beats per minute, which would be the same as sixteenth notes at 50 beats per minute. So whether you're going to call them sixteenth or eighth notes or quarter notes doesn't really matter. It would be depend on the tempo. Obviously, 16th notes at 200 would be very, very fast. So, but I wrote them as 16th on the page because there's, you'll notice on that track, if you play, press play on that track, it has a drum, a drum beat. And then usually when we have a drum beat, we're going to give the song a tempo based on the drum beat. Well, usually we give a song a tempo anyway, uh, just so it has tempo. Okay, so here's the trick with this. This is, this is the breakdown part. It's underneath that video. And uh, don't bother, if you're on that page, don't click that video. That video is old. Something interesting about that video that is the very first video I put on YouTube on April 18th, 2007. So it's almost 10 years ago that I put that video on YouTube. Wild, right? That was the very first one. Anyway, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna redo it, but, uh, but I wanted to stick it on the page as I was building the page because I thought, um, I don't know, it's the first video, the very first video I ever did. So I think with this guitar, I know it's this guitar. Yeah, some things change, some things don't. Okay, so the trick again, beat one. We hit the G, third fret, we down pick, pull off, and then go down up. Now notice we went down up on the last two because the pull off is taking place of what would have been an up. If you if you followed some of my other live streams or, or even just my videos on the channel, I talk a lot about quarter notes, right? all down, eighth notes could be down, up, or all down, then 16th notes should double that. So we end up with, if we have four 16ths on a beat, they're going down, up, down, up, right? So because that pull off is sitting where that up would be, we skip the up and then we go down, up. So that's all the pattern is. But we wanna get pretty good at that pattern before we start moving it. 
even if you go to put two in a row, you may find it's, you may have, you may get one, like going, you like, okay, I got it. And then you go to try to put two together and it's a mess. That's pretty normal. That's a pretty normal part of the learning process. And then you'll get two in a row, but you won't get three in a row. And then eventually you'll be able to. So anyway, you want to work on that by yourself a little bit. Uh, and then we move to the second part of the breakdown. Uh, we're, we're now we're going to start moving this up the string. So we, we're just, all we're basically doing is that blues scale we learned with this pattern. So we're going the G on the third fret, then A on the fifth fret, then B flat on the sixth fret, and then B on the seventh fret. So. And you can just use your first finger to just move up the fretboard, or you could go, you could use your second and third if you want on the five, six, seven, it's up to you, or you can just move one up. Uh, then we're moving, so that's that section. I know I didn't spend very much time on it because really uh, it's, uh, the idea is pretty simple there, right? The trick is this, getting that pick pattern down. Then after that it's, not too bad moving it up and then uh, it's only a two measure riff so that's riff one one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a then we move it up to the tenth fret and we're going to go tenth to twelfth up uh, except i do each of those twice so the d twice the e twice uh yeah so that's the whole riff It's kind of fun, right? So you could now you could so then once you kind of have that that pattern, which we can use all over the place. Uh, I think one of the places I first kind of stumbled across of it is many many years ago, but was it a Jose Acciani solo that was like um, I don't really remember the solo, but it was something like. Uh, <laughs> Something like that, which is basically based kind of on a G blues scale. Uh, it it kind of had, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, Joe kind of had two slightly different little patterns happening there. But anyway, I wanted to make a, a, a little simpler one. Um, you know, just for students to, to be able to get a grip on that. I think the chance that Joe Satriani one is in the member section of the site too. That site was started in 1999, so what I find interesting is we had a live stream going here not too long ago, just a couple weeks ago, and somebody met messaged that I should teach Killing in the Name by Raging Against the Machine. So we did it in the live stream. There wasn't a lot of people in the live stream, so we took a left center. Everybody was game to learn that riff. We dropped our low E string to D, and we learned Killing in the Name, and then I was partway through it, and somebody said, uh, you know you already taught that on your channel, and I had completely forgot. <laughs> that I had made a video to teach Killing of the Name, and it had been up there for years, but I had forgotten. Um, okay, well, let's see, where does that, uh, where does that leave us at? Um, oh yeah, yeah. So then I was just gonna, I was basically gonna say, now we could take that same information and we could practice any of our scales, our E, e major. <laughs> E minor, and then our E pentatonic, E minor pentatonic, sorry, or E major pentatonic, either one, I'll do minor now. Uh, and then the blues one we just did, or E major pentatonic, skipping the fourth and the seventh. Kind of neat. So, so there's a whole bunch of stuff happening here and why I like to create exercises like this. One is it gives us a new technique to work on, a new, assuming we've never really played this pick, little pick pattern before. So we're working on a pull-off. We're working on a, a pattern that is very repetitive, so we're building hand strength, right, in both hands. Um, and we're training our ear because we're just going up one string. And we're hopefully kind of learning some scales, right? So how you approach 
that depends on where you're at. You, you might want to spend just a week on one of them. You know, every day for a couple minutes, just play E minor. And then maybe the next week, uh, review the E minor, but maybe play E major. You, you, have, you have to decide how well you know these scales and how much time you want to spend them on them and how much you want to get good at this. But I think you probably get the idea of where we were going with the whole thing, right? It's trying to um, get a basic understanding of some music theory, uh, understanding the fretboard, and again, the, probably the most important thing is training our ears, to, right? To, to hear the, some of these sounds. Even if we don't understand the material, we're still training the ear, right? Even if you only remember it as third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, not the notes, and you don't even remember that it's an E minor scale, that's okay. Is you're still training your ear. There's still stuff happening. It's why you run across players that are really, really good that really don't have a whole lot of knowledge about the instrument, right? Again, like how we learn language as babies, music, why would it be any different? It's, it's sound. So we, our brain picks up those sounds and makes little mental notes, whether we're even consciously aware it's making the mental notes. Um, so last thing I'll say before, uh, then I'll take some questions if anybody has some questions, but the last thing I'll say is, um, then I'd just like to like make, put like a little E drone tone and then I'll take these exercises and I'll pick a scale, whatever sound I want to explore. Um, and then I'll just mess around with that scale. I try to only use that scale because I'm trying to get comfortable with it. So again, if it's E major, I'm gonna hit this low E. Oh wait, sorry, I lost my pattern. I'm gonna go back to the one we just learned. hit a B flat in there that did not belong um so in that case I'm just experimenting with E major the notes in the E major scale which is how we started the lesson and that pick pattern and then you know maybe I I goof around with that for a few days until I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of E major on that E string ideally I know the note names but if not that's okay too because again I train my ear for the sound uh, and then you know I do the same thing but I make it minor <laughs> minor then I ended it with an E major chord but I switched to E minor so um, yeah hopefully that was kind of fun and educational and um, yeah so the the lesson material with what we just did is is in the link below and uh, you'll notice I'm using a distorted electric guitar so it has a, a quite a different sound and feel than playing it on an acoustic but it's the same riff um, and then it's got kind of a crazy riff on and underneath which I don't think we'll do it right now, but it's a drop D tuning and it's this weird little power chord thing. But uh, but that might be worthwhile to explore too at some point if anybody has interest in that. Um, yeah, so I think if anybody has any questions, now would be the, the time to take those. But um, I basically covered the things I wanted to cover um, in this live stream on a little finger picking pattern and uh, and, and and just so you know too, when I shut the live stream off, the chat still runs for a little bit. So we can still uh, chat for a little bit and I can answer any questions anybody has just through chat. Um, yeah, so I think I will um, stop there. And because I'm gonna go back and get working on uh, the, the lessons and um, yeah, and create some more content and some more lessons. But again, follow the links in the description. Subscribe if you're interested, if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, thanks uh, for watching.